So hi there, I know that this video that I'm just about to put out goes against all the rules for YouTube which is I've already put out a video today uh, and I'm just about to stick out another one but this one is a very quick one because I've had a quick look at the update 3 additions to Portal and had a quick run through and spotted a few things that are really interesting that might be of interest to a few of you because I know you've asked a few questions. So in this video I'm just going to very quickly run through the new additions uh, to the portal in terms of the blocks for the rules editor and the mods. Just before we begin, uh, just a reminder, if you're here and you get anything from this video, I'd really appreciate you clicking the subscribe and the like button, I'm driving really, really quickly towards that 500 figure um, and all of the extra subscribe clicks are really, really appreciated. Thanks to everyone that's subscribed so far. Um, as always, you are absolutely fantastic. Really appreciate the support. So here we go, very quickly. As you can see, um, the new update has added a new mode to Portal, which is this vehicle team deathmatch. And I know that that's something that a lot of people have been asking for. And the advantage of having vehicle team deathmatch is we can now use the rules editor in game modes that include vehicles because they weren't included in the team original team deathmatch mode and they weren't included in the free for all mode. So now we can use uh, the vehicle team deathmatch. Uh, and we can create our modes from there. You can see two team space off, vehicles are out by default, and um, it's customizable using the Logic Editor, which is brilliant. Um, the settings in the service setting have been updated to reflect that there are some additional ones. You can see that uh, we have really wide selection of maps to choose from. Well, I better uh, slot one of those in. And under the game mode details, um, you can see that it is just a simple team distribution. I'm not going to go through all the settings and modifiers for this. Broadly speaking, they're very similar to the existing game modes. But it's brilliant to see that they will add things to uh, the portal, including the core game modes. And that's very promising. Hopefully, we'll see more of that later on as we progress. Next, which was also interesting, is if we open up the rules editor there have been some additions to the rules editor and I know that this was some of these were uh, things that were getting asked for by a few of my subscribers so the first thing is we can have a look under event payloads and if we have a look under event payloads you are going to see two additional blocks have been added to the event payload so originally we could only get the event player so if a player kills someone we could get the player that had performed the kill we could also get the other player, so who they'd killed, and we could also grab the team of a particular player. And you'll see here, we've also got now, in addition, event weapon as part of the payload. So if the event that you're triggering the rule on has a weapon component, so for example, when a player gets killed or when a player earns a kill, we'll be able to get the weapon that delivered the kill and uh, I didn't actually know that this was coming, to be honest, from the patch notes. But we can also get the type of death. And this is really interesting because this will tell us how the player died in game. Uh, and we can figure out what we're going to do as a consequence of that. So if a player is killed, we can figure out what it was that they were killed by or how they were killed. And if it wasn't a weapon, we can determine the method by which they were killed. What's interesting also, by the way, can you see these new shiny icons? I quite like that. Uh, new icons are very helpful. Some of the icons at the moment in this uh, uh, rules editor aren't particularly good for explaining what you need to do. So, players can get killed by all kinds of things. They can obviously get shot, um, but they could also get killed by uh, fire, by falling, or by melee, um, by a headshot. Um, so there's all kinds of ways that a player can uh, get killed in-game. This is going to allow us to check what that method was and then have some events as a consequence of that. Now, I've had a few people talking about game modes where um, players get a bonus for delivering a headshot. Well, this event death type will allow us to check to see whether there was a headshot that was delivered and, uh, yeah, uh, add some additional logic on the basis of that. I've had some people asking if we can check whether a player was killed by melee. Yes, you can now very easily using this. And it's quite easy to use if we just click on event death type, it gives us an example of uses of this payload. When we right click, we click on help and you can see here, it returns the death type of the victim from the on player died or on player killed event context. So those are the two events, on player died or on player killed. So if on player died, we can use this to return, is the victim's death type the 
event death type, so that's the payload, and then we can put in here the death type that we're checking for. I think actually what I'll do is I'll just show you an example of how that might work. Um, so we'll have a new rule, check death type. So we'll change the um, event type to on player died, which is gonna give us some access to that. And we'll have a little condition, and we'll put this condition to be if they died by um, a melee kill. Okay, and it'll give us a chance to have a look at the other block as well. So under rules, we're gonna drop in a condition, just like that, and the condition goes there. And then what we're looking for is um, this um, is player death, I think that was the one. So it's under player, and it is, oh, is victim death type. By the way, look underneath, we've got is killer weapon. So we'll have a look at that one in a minute. So we're gonna grab that, and we're gonna drop that in there. So condition, is the victim death type? And then we're gonna get that payload, the death type that the player that died, died by. And then in this box, we can put the death type that we're checking for. Uh, so we've just gotta get that, and that is under selection list, let me just find it, there we go, death types, look at that, it's got debris on there as well. So we can drag that and drop that on there, and look at all these uh, death types that we can check for. Uh, debris, desertion, drown, explosion, headshot by melee. So we'll just put headshot in there. So the actions for this rule are now gonna run if the death type of the player that died is a headshot, and we can do whatever we want, let's just put a little um, user interface in there. Let's display a notification message. Let's put a user interface in there, message. And then let's drop that in there. And let's just have a bit of text. We don't really need to do this, but it's just to give you an idea. So, you were killed by a headshot. Okay, and then we probably want to put that to the event player. Event player, there we go. Okay. Right, so if you're um, just watching this and you're looking at the new update, this is going to be brilliant because we're going to be able to check when a player died how it was that they died. The other interesting block that we've got is this one that's based around the uh, event weapon. We'll just right click on that, help, and you can see in this one is killer weapon, event weapon, inventory primary weapon. So it returns the hardware ID of the weapon used to kill the victim from the on player died or on player killed event context. So this one works exactly the same way as the other one. Um, so we'll just uh, we'll just give that an example of use of that. Obviously later on we'll look at uh, using this in some game mode types, but if we use uh, on player killed and kill, there we go. Let's get rid of that because we're not uh, we're not using that one. We are going to use the player again and we are going to get is killer weapon. So we've got another condition again. Is killer weapon. And then we've got the event payload that we had before. The event weapon. And then we need a selection list, which is the weapon that we want to check they were killed by. Um, so we want to, maybe we'll just get a primary weapon and we'll drop that in there. This is just an example. So this will now say, you killed the player with the A. 91. Now I realise that's pretty pointless to be honest in itself, it doesn't really do that much, but it does um, hopefully get you thinking about how you could use these uh, rules, these new blocks in your own game mode. Uh, let's just change that to um, check, check, weapon, kill. Alright, it doesn't really matter. So there you go. Examples of how to use these excellent new blocks. It's really good to see um, the developers adding new blocks as they go. These are a brilliant addition. Uh, these things have been asked for uh, for quite a long time. As I've said before, it's really encouraging that they're adding these blocks because it does mean that they are concentrating on developing Portal as a platform. Definitely the rules editor. These are really, really good positive steps for the Portal game mode. Um, just one final thing to mention, uh, which you may or may not have noticed, is the brilliant, I know I mentioned it right at the beginning, but these brilliant little icons that they've started adding to the instructions. One of the things that I've found a little bit disappointing when you're looking at these instructions is these missing, the little icons on the left hand side were missing. Um, that makes it difficult for a beginner to match up what goes in the block on the right, so watch actually it goes in these little slots with what is on the left. So if we take a little look at, let's say the user interface slot at the top, and we want to drag this in, 
and we're just thinking to ourselves, well, I have no idea what goes in these blocks. Um, they've taken away some of the guesswork there because now we can see that we're looking for the icon and we can see the icon there. So clearly this box will definitely fit into that slot. And again, if we look a little bit further on, you can see this little box here with the line. So if you look at selection lists, you'll see these little dashes, ovals, if you like, um, next to each of these lists. And they give you some indication of what might go into these slots. Now, it's important to note that some of these things, they don't all go into these slots. You need to check the help to make sure you're getting the right one. So for example, if I grab the inventory primary weapons list, and try and drag that and drop that in there. That's still not going to go there. It is a list and it does match the icon, but it won't go in there. We do still need to look at the help and it will tell you which list goes in there. So you can see it's got a custom message slot and that is the item that will go in that list. So we still need to use a combination of things, but really good to see these brilliant new icons. I'm really, really pleased. Actually, it makes the screen look a lot better. Right, thanks for tuning in really quickly. These are the new blocks that have been added to Portal. If you want a little bit of a guide on how to use them, that just gets you started. We will start to include those in our game modes. And hopefully, um, if you've been trying to do a game mode that includes some of these things, um, well, now you've got your solution. Um, I've got another guy coming soon. Until uh, next time, I'll speak soon. Thanks very much.